I just got finished watching Twisters, the new disaster 90s throwback style film starring Glenn Powell and Daisy Edgar Jones. I haven't really seen her in anything. She's kind of new, it seems. But you know I love my boy Glenn Powell from Top Gun and everyone but you, Hitman, the list goes on and on. He's great. And I have some bad news for the folks who love Twisters. I did not. Before you start typing your mean comments, hear me out. First of all, let's do the minor nitpicks so and get those out of the way. The first moment that I started to sour on the movie was actually kind of a minor one, but I feel like younger people will actually back me up on this. Kate, the main character, later in the movie, she meets back up with the character at a coffee shop. And in one moment, she pulls out cash, dollar bills that, you know, she had in her pocket. And I guess the director or the writer did this because they want to show she's like disheveled. No one under 30 carries cash at all for anything anymore. I think they use a phone app or a credit card or something like that. Young people never, ever, ever have cash. My dad carries cash. My older brother, who's a Gen Xer, carries cash. I maybe have like 40 bucks that I pull out from an ATM every like three months and just keep it there in case like my son wants a snow cone or something. But no one young carries cash at all. And I was just like, what, what? It, I paused it, made my wife mad. Another minor Nick pick. Uh, Glenn Powell's character is supposedly like a YouTube style star with like a million subscribers. Anybody who's in uh, streaming or even watches a streamer knows one of the most Terrible things a streamer can do is turn on the radio and start playing live music while they're streaming because that's what gets you copyright struck really quickly unless it's some sort of authorized deal or it's a track you're playing or promoting or something. But he's just turning on the radio and then playing whatever country song. Again, no streamer ever does that. So at one point, uh, the character says something like, oh, you're popular on YouTube. Let me tell you something. YouTubers are insanely popular in the real world actually out there. If you ask anybody who's under 25 or so, is it a bigger deal to me? Tom Cruise or Mr. Beast, maybe not Mr. Beast now, but they would probably tell you who for the first one. It feels like something written maybe by an older person who doesn't understand internet media, but thinks they do. But anyway, on to the actual meat of my complaints about this film. All right, we're getting into spoilers now though. So if you're really caring about the story aspects of this, you can click away and come back maybe after you watch it. So Kate goes through a horrible trauma at the beginning of this. In order to sort of set up stakes for her character, she is a go-getter high school student who's very interested in disaster weather and, and helping maybe to prevent tornadoes with this crazy device she's building with her friends and classmates. And she misjudges something. And the horrific thing that happens is all of her friends die. And we don't mean like they die screaming. She watches three of the four get sucked away in the tornado. One, she just looks back and he's gone. A love interest. He is literally pulled away saying like, I've got you, it's gonna be okay. I feel like that would really screw somebody up and, and later on in the movie, uh, they really mess up I think on this. Among the friends, there was one character who does survive and he's off in a different location during the event. And so, you know, he and her are the only two survivors, Kate and this guy, his name's Hobby. Now I feel like the writer, the director wanted Hobby to come across as sympathetic, especially on early in the movie after, you know, five years after the tragedy occurs, we jump ahead in time. He reconnects with her, right? But immediately, Javi starts being a complete and total jerk. Because the first thing he does after reconnecting with Kate is start asking her, hey, you know that horrific trauma where you watched, you know, everybody you love and care for, including the person you were in love with, die right before your eyes? I want you to get back involved directly with that stuff by coming and helping me with a job. What's worse is Javi, he says explicitly that he was deployed in the military at one point. So the guy's got to understand PTSD. I mean, like, I'm sure seeing deployment into a combat zone, he might have had some friends, you know, suffered injury and, or God forbid, were even killed over there. So him coming and asking her to do this, it's crazy for his character to do that. If they're trying to make him still be sympathetic, which... And that's another thing I want to talk about. They don't seem to know what they want to make him. Because at one point they then decide, I guess he's the antagonist or whatever, but then he has a change of heart. And then the guy who's the MIT guy, he's now the a-hole is like, I don't care about people. Like just like cartoon villain sort of stuff. Again, no one ever says, I don't care about people. He would be more like, we were going to help people by doing this or something, which actually that's another thing I have a problem with. Now, again, I don't want anybody to misconstrue this. So natural disasters are horrible and people who go to help out and stuff after them are immensely incredible. And especially in live disaster scenarios where people are actively needing help. For example, like say Hurricane Katrina, where New Orleans was flooding and people went down there with the boats to help rescue people who were stranded in their attics. That kind of stuff is great. That's not what happened after this though. Tornadoes, very short-lived, very horrible, but for a very small area. Most of the time, someone's either dead from them 
or you're helping clean stuff up. I, by the way, I'm from the South originally, so I grew up when tornadoes are happening all the time around here. Uh, they are terrifying. I've actually been caught in a really bad hailstorm where quarter size hail was smashing the top of my car and breaking my windshield as I was sitting in it as an idiotic move to try and beat it home. But when Javi was saying, we gotta go find this super expensive thing with a GPS that's gonna help us find the data before it, you know, the GPS dies and it's lost forever, she's like, no, no, Javi, we need to go hand out water bottles to people. Okay, good job. You want to help people who need water bottles, but also this thing, if you lose it, all that stuff you've done is for nothing. And all the kinds of people who could be helped by this are now going to suffer because you wanted to hand out water bottles. But most of all, the thing I want to spend the most time on, my criticism of this film, the person who plays Kate is a terrible actress. Let me explain why. So I want to kind of get in the headspace again for her at the beginning of the movie. She watches all of her friends die around her. And later in the movie, the exact phrase that her love interest was, you know, telling her while he was there holding her before he was sucked away into oblivion is said again by somebody. And Kate's reaction to this is not freaking out, having like a just absolute hysterical moment. It's like, huh, 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 like kind of blinking and looking around and stuff. Like a person doesn't know what they're supposed to do. At one point, she's even confronted about the aspect of loss by a character. And instead of like screaming at them like a person who, again, watched their four friends die in front of their face, she just kind of huffs and walks away. It seems like they really could have done well to like have a conversation with some people who've maybe gone through like some sort of horrific trauma. Like maybe ask, you know, to interview somebody who watched something horrific happen to a close friend of theirs right in front of them. How did that affect them? What sort of reaction they have about it? You know, recall things, have them give input for that sort of thing. Because this just felt really like weird and off-putting. I remember another key point, whenever she was talking to Glenn Powell's character, she said, and I made that mistake and I have to live with it. Not, I made a mistake and they all died for it. Or I watched my friends die because of my mistake. It's like, I have to live with that mistake that I made. Like she's a drunk driver. When people recall trauma like that, they think about the personal aspect that affected them with. The action was still cool, the CGI was neat, but that's not the stuff that matters. Glenn Powell looking beautiful and smiling really big is not what matters. It's the character interactions. And so for that, I give this about two and a half stars. Sorry.